Gonzaga Nation, SI, Dan Dickow with an unexpected podcast recording late on a Sunday evening in August. There's been lots of interesting news around Gonzaga recently, um, whether it be the uh, conference realignment talks, whether it's been uh, the addition of Luka Krinovic from Croatia, uh, who is now in Spokane getting ready for uh, his freshman season at Gonzaga, um, whether it is schedule updates, but we have an update that really wasn't seen coming in any way, shape, or form, and that is a recent commit to be a to-be freshman, Marcus Adams Jr., uh, who committed to Gonzaga on July 22nd after spending about a month on campus at Kansas has decided Gonzaga is not the place for him, and he is no longer going to enroll in fall semester, uh, which seems a little odd and a little strange, and it puts a lot of question marks on this young man's career when you think about it and you look at it. It's a four-star recruit, um, which honestly, three-star, four-star doesn't mean a whole lot. You know, if you're a true five-star, which would be, you know, typically your top 15 to 20 players, you've got a legitimate chance to to be considered a one, one and done. But the three stars and four stars, in all honesty to me, it's it's eye of the beholder or when the evaluator saw you uh, or at times uh, where you play and you can get a little bit more notoriety or be seen a little bit more by uh, many evaluators and increase your recruiting in, in those ways. But that being said, he uh, from the Southern California area, he was pretty highly recruited, decided to go to Kansas, went to summer school in Kansas, and then with the transfer portal and all of the um, movement um, within about a month, realized that Kansas was not the place that he wanted to be at. And so he decided to um, leave Kansas reopen his recruiting which is how he ended up at Gonzaga looked at a number of other schools from my understanding a lot of Southern California schools uh, I I am guessing it would have been like your USC's your UCLA's your Pepperdine LMU depending on you know who was involved in his recruitment um, coming out of high school but he chose Gonzaga made a couple big social media posts about it um, and now it is we sit here Sunday August 27th with about uh, a week or so before classes begin and he decides to not come to Gonzaga. So um, I don't think it's a big issue for Gonzaga, to be honest with you. Um, the way things were shaping up and he looked at the roster, uh, I don't think there was a lot of minutes uh, that were going to be coming his way. Um, he was going to have to earn those minutes. And if he's bouncing from Kansas early and then he bounces from Gonzaga early, you know, that that's a player that might shy away from, you know, the competition for minutes. Maybe he wants uh, the minutes kind of handed to him. And that's something that Coach Few and, and staff at Gonzaga are never going to do. They're not going to recruit a player and essentially say, you are going to play this. A lot of times what they will do is um, they share a vision of how they could be used, how they could be utilized, how they could have a role. But then the player has to go out and earn it. And, you know, one of those things for a young player, sometimes at, at that age of and stage of your career, you don't understand just how uh, difficult it is and just how much you have to compete on a day to day basis. So um, don't know, don't know him, but that's one of the things that that I see is maybe he was afraid of uh, some competition and really having to kind of, you know, put his best foot forward every single day and, and grind it out amongst uh, other high level players because when you look at the wings for Gonzaga, Steel Venters, uh, the South Korean uh, youngster June, uh, you're looking at uh, Luka Kronovich maybe now can be looked at as possibly a two at times, even though he has some point guard skills to him. Uh, you know, there's lots of different things that, um, you know, might come into play. The question now becomes is because he transfers again so quickly. Is he 
working on a backhanded uh, recruitment and trying to get himself aligned to a different school? Is he going to ask for an immediate waiver? Um, because that's many times uh, what has to happen if you're going to be uh, able to play really quickly. So that's going to be something interesting to keep your eye on. I have no idea if if uh, if he's asked for one. I don't know. It's just something that um, kind of came to mind when kind of tracked this story today, uh, followed it a little bit. But all in all, um, you know, uh, I don't think it's a a blow to Gonzaga. I think it's kind of one of those things where it could be addition by subtraction because sometimes if if a player isn't going to fit culture wise, personality wise, work ethic wise, and I don't know this player, I haven't seen him in the gym, I haven't met him, um, but these are just all these things that you know many times young players. Uh, don't think about when they're going through the process. Uh, you know, when you're looking for your third school in a matter of about five and a half weeks, uh, that makes things very difficult. So um, we'll not be at Gonzaga. We'll be interesting to see where he lands. And if he requests a waiver um, to be able to play immediately. So um, we'll be back with lots of different news with Gonzaga Nation throughout this next week. Christian Pedersen and I will have our WCC Weekly. We will have our mailbag episodes. And we've also got a big interview lined up and scheduled this week with the WCC Commissioner Stu Jackson. We'll be recording that later this week, probably release it in a week or so. So for Gonzaga Nation SI, don't forget to continue to check in on our website and all of our social media channels for all 